All right, guys, so if you know me or you're familiar with this channel, you know I am a huge Android guy. Specifically, I love the Samsung Galaxy phones, and I've been using Android phones for a really long time. I think the last time I had an iPhone was probably the iPhone 3, which I think at this point was like 15 years ago. And ever since then, I've been using Android. And then when the iPhone 15 came out, I decided to pick this phone up and use it exclusively for a month as my main phone. I put my SIM card in here and I use it as a daily driver just to see what it's like to use an iPhone after all this time on an Android. Now, keep in mind, a month really isn't that long, so it's not like I have the full-blown experience, but I think it's long enough to give my opinion on. And I do actually have a MacBook and some AirPods, so I was able to dabble with the ecosystem a little bit. But in this video, I want to specifically talk about the phones and not even the hardware, because let's be honest, both of these phones have amazing cameras, they're premium quality, they are the best of the best. And really the biggest differences between these phones is the operating system. So we have Android One UI running on the Galaxy S23 Ultra, and of course iOS on the iPhone. 15 Pro Max. All right, guys, so let's get into some of the things that I don't like about the iPhone 15 or the iOS specifically. And the first one is something that I didn't like immediately as soon as I picked up the phone. And it is something that you have to deal with every single moment that you are using this phone. And it is as simple as not having a universal back gesture. And this honestly bothered me the most about the iPhone. I just don't understand why you can't swipe from the right to go back, especially because it's easier to reach the right side with your thumb when you're using your phone. It's a lot harder to stretch your thumb all the way to the left side of the phone to swipe backwards and what makes it even more confusing is it's different depending on what application you're in so for example if you're looking at a photo swiping from the sides just makes you go to the next or previous photo in order to actually exit or stop looking at the photo you have to swipe it down now i know this isn't a huge issue and you can obviously get used to this as you're using your phone that'll just kind of be muscle memory but when it comes to the android i feel like there's just that you know, fluidity throughout the whole entire phone. No matter what application you're in, no matter what browser you're using, no matter what settings or where you are in your phone, swiping from either side of the corners of the phone will be a back gesture. So you have that consistency all across the phone, no matter what you're doing. And that's something that I really like a lot more when it comes to the Android ecosystem. All right, guys, the next thing I don't like about the iPhone is that there is no way to access the settings of any specific app when you're in that application. So for example, if you're using your phone's camera and you want to go to your camera settings, you can't do it from within the camera application. You actually have to leave the camera application, open up your phone settings, go to the camera section, and then in here you can make whatever changes you want to your camera or play with the settings in your camera. On Android, it's a lot more intuitive because whatever application you're in, you can access the settings directly from within that application. So if you're in your camera on your phone, all you gotta do is tap the gear icon up here and you're immediately taken to the settings and you can change whatever it is that you need to change about the camera. And even when it comes to things as simple as changing the brightness or turning on or off the adaptive brightness on your phone, on your Samsung phone, all you gotta do is swipe down you have your brightness bar, you can hit these three dots and then you can change the brightness. You can also select if you want adaptive brightness enabled or disabled and you have your extra brightness toggle in here. You don't need to go through any of the settings. It's immediately available for you right here. Whereas on the iPhone, all you can do from your control center is control the brightness of your display. But if you want to actually enable or disable the adaptive brightness or change any of those settings, you gotta go rummaging through all sorts of settings to even find where the setting is. It is just a lot more work and a lot less intuitive and just a worse user experience in my opinion. I think Android does a much better job when it comes to managing the settings on your phone than iOS. All right, the next thing I really didn't like about the iPhone and I honestly don't know how people deal with this, it's the keyboard. It is just it was probably like just the worst experience that I had on the iPhone because first of all, there's no number row. So anytime you need to type your address or like a postal code or anything that requires numbers and letters, you're constantly having to flip between the two keyboards and there's a lot more friction when it comes to typing. And there's also no period or comma on the main keyboard. So again, if you need a dot or a comma, you have to keep swapping between the both of these keyboards. The Android keyboard, on the other hand, is just so much more user-friendly. You have all of your numbers right there on the top row. You have a comma, you have a period, and you can even go into the settings of your Android keyboard and enable something called alternative characters. And now you'll even have access to all of these secondary characters by long pressing any of the letters, and you'll be able to use all of the symbols like the percent sign, dollar sign, the pound, the, the at sign, ampersand, everything directly from your main keyboard. The next thing I don't like about iOS is the volume control. There's no way 
to control separate volume groups. So for example, you have your ringtones and your notifications, your system sounds, sounds within applications like media players or YouTube or Instagram, all of these things you can't control. The only thing you can do with these volume buttons is control the ringtone and notification sound. And you can actually swap it to control system volume. But to do that, you have to go again into the settings, go to sound and haptics, and then there's a toggle in there. And again, when you turn it on, now you can only control those system sounds, but you can't control the ringtone or notification sounds of the iPhone. So you have to choose which one you want, which I mean, I know you can program the action button to be a mute switch, but with all the other options in there, I'd rather map something more important to this, like the flashlight or the camera. So why would I waste this action button on like being a mute switch? So again, you, you have to decide what you want to control with those volume buttons. And of course on the Android, it's a completely different story. You can control all of your volumes. All you need to do is just hit the volume rocker and then hit the three dots on the actual volume knob. And you can see you have all of your options right here. You have your system sounds, you have your notification volumes, you have your AI assistant volume, you have your actual ringtone volume, you have your media volume, and you even can add extra applications into here so you can control volumes of specific applications like TikTok or Reddit or Instagram, YouTube, whatever you want. All right, the next thing that I think iOS doesn't really do a really good job of that Android does much better is managing notifications. When it comes to the iPhone, it's an all or nothing approach. Whereas on the Android, you can go into your notification categories under any single application and you have so many different applications. All of these notifications are broken down into smaller subcategories and you can make the decision if you do not want to be notified every time you get a like or somebody posts a video or just tags you, you can remove whatever you you don't want to be notified about, but leave everything else enabled. So maybe you do want to get notified every time you get a direct message or somebody mentions you in a video, you can still have your phone notify you about that, but it won't notify you every time you get likes. So you're not constantly being interrupted and bombarded by notifications all throughout the day. Also on the Android, we have these notification icons at the top of your phone. So you can see if you have any pending notifications that you didn't get to, and you can even snooze these notifications for later. So this is such a great feature and it's so much better than just swiping a notification away because it will just come back and remind you about it later so you don't forget what you need to do. All right, guys, so those are kind of the major things that I noticed coming from an Android to an iPhone. A lot of people always say that iPhones are so intuitive, so user-friendly, but as an Android user, I feel like that's really not true. I feel like the Android gives you so much more control and so much better of a user experience than the iPhone, just especially with the things that I just mentioned. And on top of all those major things that I mentioned, there's a lot more smaller things that I really don't want to talk too much about because this video could get really lengthy. But just to mention some, for example, when you're shooting a video on the Android phone, you can actually pause the video without stopping it completely and then start refilming that video again when you're ready. So if you need to like move something around or move some people around, you don't have to keep filming and and taking up storage on your phone. You can just pause the video and then start recording again when you're ready. On the iPhone, you have no option to do that. Once you start recording, it just keeps recording and you have to actually completely stop the recording if you want to pause the video and then you have to like restart it again. You also can't do something as simple as moving icons to wherever you want on your home screen. Like setting up an iPhone and personalizing it is almost impossible. All iPhones look the same because you're so limited in what you can do. On the Android phone, you can put icons wherever you want. You can change how many icons you can put on the home screen. You can customize it to whatever way you want your phone to look. There's just so much more customizability to make the phone feel more authentic. Another thing I'd really like a lot more about the Android phone is the actual dialer phone application. When you're typing a phone number, the Android phone will actually filter your contacts and all of your call history on the iPhone. You just get your numbers and no matter what you type, it really doesn't display anything. I also really don't like that iPhones don't have reverse wireless charging. I can charge anything I want on the back of my phone. It doesn't even need to be an Android device. I can charge an iPhone on the back of my Android device. It's so convenient. I actually went away for a weekend with the iPhone and I only brought one charger because this is USB-C now. So I figured I'll just bring one USB-C cable, but then my AirPods are still lightning and my AirPods died and I was charging the iPhone and I couldn't put the AirPods on top of the iPhone to charge both the iPhone and the AirPods. It was just really Really annoying. I don't understand why iPhones can't charge their own devices within their e own ecosystem. Like my Android phone can charge my AirPods. I can plug this phone in to an outlet, have it charging, put another device on top of here and charge both at the same time. That is just such a convenient 
amazing feature. And when it comes to the charging, something cool that the Android phone does is when you plug it into a charger, it will actually display how much time is left until the phone is fully charged. So you kind of get an idea of how long you have until your phone is at capacity. Whereas on the iPhone, you just plug it in, it starts charging, but it doesn't actually tell you how much time is left until it's fully charged. And again, it's not a huge deal. You can obviously live without it, but it's just one of those nice little user experience things that Android has that iPhone just doesn't. Now the iPhone of course does have its strengths over the Android ecosystem or the Galaxy S23 Ultra, but a lot of these things are tied into the ecosystem. Without the ecosystem, this phone by itself really isn't that great. And I guess that's kind of the point. That's what Apple has been trying to build all of these years, having iMessage and FaceTime and AirDrop and Face ID. All of these things are kind of what make the iPhone so desirable by a lot of people. You, they like that ecosystem and they want all of these features that you're just not gonna get with an Android. And I can definitely admit that there are a lot of strengths on the iPhone that the Galaxy phones or just the Android uh, operating system doesn't even come close to. And a lot of things the iPhone does better. For example, there's no bloatware on here. I absolutely hate the bloatware that comes with Galaxy phones. There's all these applications that come pre-installed that you can't even uninstall. You can only disable, like what's that all about? iMessage and FaceTime is really cool, especially if you have group conversations or you have groups with family members just being able to communicate between these mediums is really convenient and it's even kind of fun magsafe is absolutely amazing i love magsafe i think it is probably one of the coolest technologies built into the iphones that a lot of people don't really give credit to being able to attach like chargers on the back of your phone or even accessories like wallets or power banks and just have them wirelessly attached to the back of your phone that's so cool i love that i think magsafe is a really underrated feature that i wish we had on androids let me know in the comments below if you are an android user or an iPhone user and if you've ever spent some time with the other ecosystem, what did you like or not like? Or what do you hope that Android or iPhone could steal from each other to make it better? But that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.